Hey folks, it's Finn. Today's vlog is a transgender topic, but actually the contents of this vlog could probably be applied to a lot of situations. So today I'm going to be talking about coping with waiting times, and this is something I'm often asked by people. How do you cope with the wait for testosterone, the wait for appointments, the wait for surgery? Transition is really one huge waiting game. I began my transition in 2011 when I came out, eventually started hormones, eventually started surgery, and then finally in 2018, I was medically done. So that's six years, and going through it, it felt like a hundred years. Now, looking back, it feels like a flash in the pan. But along the way, I developed certain ways to cope with these things. So today I want to share the five things I found most helpful in being able to cope with these long waits in transition. And these five things are setting small achievable goals, remembering to focus on other areas of your life, finding a way to record your journey and remind yourself of how far you've come, learn how to develop a positive mindset, to keep yourself upbeat and the importance of developing a network of support throughout your transition. Five things really, really helpful. The first one is the most important for me, making sure to set yourself lots of small achievable goals. When we begin transition, when I began my transition, and I knew myself to be a man, all I wanted more than anything in the world was to be in that place where the internal man showed on the outside. I wanted the deep voice, the beard, the flat chest, everything. And I wanted it then. <laughs> but transition takes time and it's good to have an end goal in mind. Of course it is. But if you focus on that end goal, you will drive yourself bonkers because everything takes its own sweet time in transition. Even when you're on hormones, we all change at different rates. When you apply for surgery, the waiting lists keep changing. So it's really important to just bring it down, bring it to the small goals right in front of your face. Hold that big picture in mind, but bring it right back down to the here and now. Think of this like a road. You know that beautiful destination is where you're going, but it is the small steps on this path that eventually you look up and bang, you've arrived. And that's the best way to do it. So for example, if you've just come out, your small goals can be emailing friends, meeting up with friends, coming out to people, changing your name by Depot, going to your doctors, all of these things, set these up as your achievements and work in those goals. Once you've completed that, then the next goal, then the next. Small achievable goals give a sense of progression, of moving forward and achievement and that's so important to feel like there is some movement. Remember, there is far more to you than your gender identity, so always remember to focus on the other areas of your life. Don't put your life on hold in transition. It's so easy to think, oh, when I've transitioned, I can do this, or I can't do this yet because I'm not completely me. Don't put your life on hold, it will make you miserable. There is so much more to you than just your transness. And remember that, remember the things you're interested in doing, whether it's to go to college, university, night classes to learn something. Perhaps you want to learn a musical instrument. Perhaps you want to focus on your friend group. There is so much of you that there is to develop and grow. And this can relate to goal number one, small achievable goals. Don't have to be just about being trans. They can be all sorts of things, getting fit, getting healthy, going vegetarian, making a healthier diet, developing a new hobby. The list is endless. So remember, you are more than your trans identity. It's important to recognise and acknowledge even the smallest of move forward. I've kept diaries for years and I always recommend that people do this because they're a great, great way to remind ourselves how far we've come. When we feel low, it's so easy to just see the negative and think I'm not getting anywhere. 
then if you've kept a diary you can look back and go oh actually a week ago I felt like this and I was doing this and now this week it's so much better and this is so important and again this diary can contain everything not just your gender transition progression but also your goals in life that you're working towards so keeping a diary making a note of the things you've done the things you've achieved then you've got evidence in that book when your mind's telling you otherwise when the dysphoria is really bad when your mental health is awful you have evidence in your diary that you can do this that you've overcome and that you've achieved loads already and that helps you to believe that you can get through this and you can go on one of the best gifts you can give yourself in transition is learning to develop a positive mindset now people often get positivity wrong Positivity is never about saying everything's perfect and brilliant, because it rarely is. It's about saying X, Y, Z is bad, absolutely. Waiting lists are awful. We should not be waiting as long as we're waiting for. It is appalling. However, if you focus on just that, it will drag you down. So you have to learn ways in which to feel positive. So when you've exhausted all options, when you've rung the clinics, when you've chased up doctors, when everything is out of your control and all you can do is wait, you can instead focus on creating a positive mindset by looking at the other things in your life that are good. And one of the best ways of doing this is a gratitude list. I still use these a lot whenever I'm low, whenever I feel that life is just really bad. I take a pen and a bit of paper and sometimes it's really hard, but I start by writing something small down that I'm grateful for. On a bad day, when I can't think of anything else, I can think, well, I'm grateful that I have a pen and a piece of paper to write on. Then I can think, I'm grateful I have a desk to sit on. I'm grateful I have a house to live in. And you find, once you find one thing to be grateful for, it's a snowball effect, and suddenly there's lots more to be grateful for. And I guarantee you, after spending a few moments writing a list, you will find lots to smile about. It won't take away from the fact that you're still waiting, and that's not fair and it's painful but you will also have this big list of things that are good in your life to make you smile and make you feel good about by regularly doing this you develop this positivity muscle these things do take practice and the more you do them the more you'll be able to see yep this situation's rubbish but i can do this about it and right now i might be able to just accept it and think about some positive things in my life instead and small goals and all of these other things you learn to choose your mindset you learn to move your mindset away from that negative thing onto something positive in your life to lift yourself up did that make sense another really important thing you can do for yourself is to develop a support network now i can relate to not wanting to go outside in early transition when my anxiety was huge my dysphoria was huge going outside was just too much and so I first initially went onto forums and I developed friendships on forums, support on forums and then gradually I branched out and I went to groups and met up with people in the real world and it is so helpful for two main reasons really. When you go onto these forums and you join groups you meet people who are further ahead of you in the journey so you can look at them and say well they've been where I am, they've got through and they're so much happier. That helps you to remember this end goal and you also see people who are in the same situation as you. It helps you to realise that you're not the only one struggling. And you'll also be further ahead of some people, which then makes you see that there is progress and that you can actually be of help to those people that are just starting and you have the benefit of your wisdom to pass on to, you, to them with how far you've come. So support groups help us to feel supported and feel like we're not alone, but they can also give us a sense of purpose and usefulness as well in transition and a sense of community and with a sense of community brings faith and hope and just a sense of just knowing we're not on our own. Going through transition is really hard and developing resilience is really crucial to cope with all of the waiting times and the times you're going to be let down and the times you're going to feel powerless. If we develop ourselves, our own positive mindsets, our ability to look after our mental health by thinking positively, developing a support network, working on gratitude lists, all of these things give our power back to us to do something. We have the power to then respond to our situation and feel less out of control of everything. And more importantly, to remember that, you know, we are 
more than just our trans selves and that there is going to be a time when we're at the end of the line and we're done and we're going to suddenly look back and go wow where did that time go because that's how it is for me now I'm going wow a minute ago I was looking at this huge trans mountain but what I did was I focused on the little steps I talked to people on the mountain journey on the way and bang all of a sudden I'm at the top and it will be that way for you too remember no matter how bad it feels reach out ask for help because this is only temporary. You are going to get where you want to get. It's inevitable. Once you're on this journey, you know what you want, you will get there. So reach out. I will put some links at the bottom. You can always give me a message. I'm always happy to help. Just hang in. It is going to be okay. I really do hope that helps. If you have any other hints, tips, suggestions to people who are struggling with waiting times, I'd love it if you could leave it in the comments section below. Let people know what's helped. Maybe certain groups, online groups have helped you. It's all about helping each other through this. So we all know what it's like. So letting everybody know in the comments below would be really, really lovely. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of the regular Finstorms. See you soon, folks. Bye-bye.